It is Sunday the 27th of May 2018. I'm in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal just starting up my alternative spiritual practice of protesting against Unitarian clergy abuse as well as various other Unitarian Universalist injustices, abuses and hypocrisy. It's not just clergy abuse but that's the main emphasis and I can only write so much in a chalk slogan. Clergy abuse, like I said, it's the main central uh, issue and then there's other issues related to it, outside of it, but very closely connected. And then there's some issues that aren't even uh, connected to clergy abuse at all. But like I said, this began over 20 years ago actually as a protest against Unitarian clergy abuse and more specifically, in my case, it was non-sexual clergy abuse. It was uh, not sexual misconduct, sexual abuse. It was uh, basically verbal and psychological abuse, intolerance and bigotry, slander and libel on the part of uh, Reverend Ray Drennan, which uh, eventually caused me to start my protest in May of 1998 after the... Uh, Unitarian Church of Montreal uh, dismissed and ignored all of my efforts to uh, deal responsibly with uh, Reverend Ray Drennan's intolerance and bigotry and so on. Um, and that also includes the Unitarian Universalist Association failing uh, miserably to do anything to uh, ensure that uh, Reverend Ray Drennan face some accountability for his uh, clergy abuse, verbal and psychological clergy abuse, as I said, abuse of power and so on. Um, so that's it. Yeah, my protest began in May of 1998. I don't remember specifically which Sunday in May it was. It's possible it even started in April, but but uh, definitely it was, you know, started in, in May for sure. And then the first uh, media attention was in June, early June of 1998. So certainly uh, June is uh, is uh, you know that there's there's solid evidence you know in terms of uh, media coverage that this uh, protest uh, was ongoing in June of 1998. So we were basically celebrating the 20th anniversary of initiating my protest against Unitarian Universalist clergy abuse in 1998, and we'll be celebrating that 20-year anniversary all through. June as well. The, the theme will be 20 years of protesting. And the only reason that it's been going on 20 years is obviously because the Unitarians, either locally at the Unitarian Church of Montreal or at the head office level, the Unitarian Universalist Association, have always shown, chosen uh, willful ignorance and psychological denial over doing the right thing and, and dealing responsibly with the issues I'm protesting against, uh, both the ones that affect me personally and the others that uh, are broader, broader concerns about Unitarian Universalist clergy abuse more generally, including Unitarian Universalist uh, clergy sex abuse and even sex abuse of children by Unitarian Universalist ministers. I'm not a victim of any kind of uh, sex abuse by Unitarian Universalist minister, but I became aware of A, Unitarian Universalist clergy abuse, clergy sexual abuse, indeed some quite egregious cases of it, um, and also um, the fact that the Unitarian Universalist Association uh, failed miserably to responsibly handle clergy sexual abuse. You know, when I was in contact with advocates for clergy misconduct victims, you know, in the late 1990s. So uh, I decided, well, I can certainly add, uh, add uh, protest against clergy sexual abuse to my protest as well. Um, and uh, that's what I did. Uh, I tried to keep the emphasis as much as possible on clergy abuse in general because I didn't want clergy sexual abuse to obscure the fact that there's also non-sexual abuse which can be quite serious and I will even argue that some of the less serious forms of clergy sexual misconduct you know such as for instance uh, let's say you know making improper 
sexual advances uh, to uh, congregant are actually uh, more harmful and damaging. Uh, sorry, less. Uh, yeah. What I'm trying to say here is, is that some of the, the, the less serious forms of clergy sexual misconduct are actually less harmful and damaging uh, to the victims um, and indeed the community in general than, than some of the more harmful forms of, uh, of non-sexual clergy abuse. Um, to, to give an example, you know, one form of uh, non-sexual clergy misconduct would be Unitarian Universalist ministers uh, engaging in, uh, let's say, financial shenanigans, you know, which can cost Unitarian Universalist congregations, you know, thousands and even tens of thousands of dollars. And I, I would say that's a worse form of abuse than, than let's say, asking a congregant out for a date, uh, which is also considered to be a form of clergy misconduct. As I said, that's sort of the lower end of clergy sexual misconduct is, is basically uh, sexualizing a relationship with a, a congregant, even if it's a consensual. Uh, that wasn't always the case. That's a more recent development. In other words, in the past, it was accepted, I believe, for Unitarian Universalist ministers to sexualize relations with uh, congregants. And you can believe me that many of them did. Some of them uh, basically use their congregations as harems um, and that's not just my words that's actually uh, paraphrasing what uh, some Unitarian Universalist ministers who know a little bit about the uh, Unitarian clergy sexual misconduct have said they've literally used the word you know, they've literally said maybe not in those exact words but very very close you know basically said that you know some you know, uh, libidinous Unitarian Universalist ministers have, have effectively used their congregations as, as harems, you know, they've used them as, as uh, sources of, uh, you know, multiple sexual relationships, essentially. Anyway, so it's 20 years of willful ignorance and psychological denial on the part of uh, not only Montreal Unitarians, but the uh, larger Unitarian Universalist uh, religious community. There's many things that Montreal Unitarians and indeed the Unitarian Universalist Association could have done in those 20 years to responsibly address the issues I'm protesting against, but they've done no such thing. On the contrary, they've actually repeatedly tried to uh, shut down my protest by misusing the uh, SPVM police force and the criminal justice system uh, to uh, try and force an end to my protest by bringing bullshit criminal charges against me and uh, trying to ticket me into oblivion and so on. Um, and I basically had to put up with you know, a fair bit of police intimidation and police harassment over most of those 20 years. I'm happy to say that in recent years, I would say since 2014, so about four years, the last four years, the interventions on the part of the SPVM have been uh, fairly minimal, with one exception. Um, well, actually, one or two exceptions. But basically, after 2014, or after, well, after 2013, when there were several videos of uh, interactions with SPVM police officers who basically were abusing their power and looking foolish and stupid, you know, I posted those to YouTube, and the re reaction from the public was, was uh, basically, you know, agreeing that, that I was A, standing up for my rights, and B, the police were abusing their power. Um, basically, after 2013, after at least three of these videos went up, um, the SPVM scaled back their interventions at the church and so on, uh, and actually were much more polite and professional on those occasions when they did intervene, and much more respectful of my rights. So. So basically, since 2014 uh, until now, 2018, so basically, you know, at least three years, maybe uh, four years. Well, yeah, wait, wait, 2014, 2015, 2016, 20, yeah, so at least four years, heading towards five years with, as I said, one or two or maybe three exceptions, one notable exception. The SPVM has basically stayed out of it and just let me exercise my rights. And, and so that's... Uh, good for me and it's also 
good for them. Um, so that's it, uh, 20 years. 20 years of willful ignorance and psychological denial on the part of uh, Montreal Unitarians and uh, the Unitarian Universalist Association and indeed hundreds if not thousands of other individual Unitarian Universalists throughout the Unitarian Universalist uh, religious community in uh, North America. Um, I'm noticing my sensors overheating so uh, I may have to shut down the camera for a bit but I, uh, we're off to a pretty good start. We got uh, three chalk slogans down. We've seen two of them and there's another one down the other end and uh, I think uh, what we will do is uh, is uh, probably shut the camera off for a few minutes to let it uh, cool down so I can start up a fresh uh, clip of video. So we got a few people uh, coming out of the car, taxi here, walking across my protest slogan. So let's just have another uh, look at it. We've already seen it a few times, but uh, yeah, yeah, we got two like older long-term members of the Unitarian Church of Montreal. They're, they've almost certainly been here for 20 years, so these old women here who are probably looking like 70-something, uh, you know, they've been here since they were in their 50s, if not earlier, and they've totally ignored this uh, protest. They've done absolutely nothing to ensure that uh, this protest is responsibly uh, responded to by the church locally. Um, and pretty well, you know, the whole congregation is, is guilty of, uh, <clears throat> of doing absolutely nothing, of refusing, even obstinately refusing, to deal responsibly with the issues. Because if they dealt responsibly with the issues, if they, if they told the truth, if they acknowledged the truth, if they properly apologized for certain things, if they held certain people accountable, um, I wouldn't be protesting. You know, if they changed policies and procedures and so on and changed, you know, the actual practice, because there's often a, there's often a disjoint between the uh, stated policies, procedures, and, and how they actually do things. In other words, they might have these really nice policies and procedures, uh, but they don't follow them. Uh, when there's a clergy misconduct complaint. Uh, I've experienced that personally myself, and I know of many, many other people, victims of clergy misconduct, uh, where, where, yes, you know, the, the, the church hasn't even properly enforced its own claimed policies and procedures. And I can say that the policies and procedures themselves are far from perfect. There's serious, serious flaws in the policies and procedures uh, but if they nonetheless followed these flawed uh, policies and procedures, you know, there would be a modicum of justice for, for most Unitarian Universalist clergy misconduct victims. To say nothing if, if they just followed their claimed seven principles. You know, the Unitarian Universalist religious community has seven principles. Well, if they just followed to the letter and the spirit those seven overall principles when dealing with clergy misconduct, well then there would be genuine justice and equity and compassion for Unitarian Universalist clergy misconduct victims, clergy abuse victims, but, but they absolutely do not do that. Um, many, 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 literally hundreds of victims of Unitarian Universalist clergy misconduct have never had any 